Welcome back to the Band Guide, where we use GarageBand to create professional sounding music. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to talk to you about GarageBand Drummer. GarageBand Drummer is crazy. It's amazing. It's maybe the biggest improvement in home recording in history. That's probably too big of a statement, but it's crazy what it allows you to do at home. It gives you a very realistic feeling drummer in your computer. It's so powerful, and it sounds good. So in today's video, I want to give you a complete beginner's guide to GarageBand Drummer. But even if you've been using it, I recommend you still watch this video because I promise I'm going to point out a couple little things here or there that I figured out over years that will be helpful to you and probably save you a lot of headaches. So definitely stick around for that. But before we even get into it, I want to give you something. GarageBand Drummer sounds good once you get the part figured out, which is what today is going to be about. But you can make it sound even more real. And I've put together a completely free guide on how to make GarageBand drums sound real. There's a link in the description below where you can pick it up completely free, so be sure to grab it. But let's go and jump into GarageBand and look at GarageBand Drummer. Now, the first thing we'll need to do to use a drummer track is create a drummer track. So we're gonna go up here to this left corner and hit this plus button. And then we wanna make sure we have the drummer selected and hit create. Now, when this opens up, it is going to create a track that is set with a region on it already that is something that's going to play a drum part for you, but we can move this around if we want. Now, you'll see already this will tweak as we move it around. That's really important to note, but just know that this is your region that is going to be playing a drum part. I could delete this. If I do, I can add another one by hitting that plus button, and I also might need to move it to start at the right point in my song. So in this case, my song actually starts on the second measure, so I want to have the drums come in on the second measure. Right? So that is what you are set up with initially, and you'll also have noticed that it opens up a library window over here on the left and an editor window here on the bottom. We can close this library on the left by hitting Y over here or clicking on this little library button. And we can close the editor window by hitting E on the keyboard or clicking on the scissors here. This will look different for whatever track we have selected, but since we're on the drummer, it's gonna look like this. Okay, now in the library, you have two things. You have your drummer, and this is like the coolest thing about GarageBand, and it's also in Logic, and the overlap here is amazing. The fact that they include this in GarageBand is amazing. These drummers are real drummers that played real parts, and we are now getting to use that very realistic feel of a drummer playing a part in our music. It's amazing, it's incredible, super powerful, and they all have very different styles. Now, with the drummer also comes the drum set. So each of these drummers has a preset drum kit that they'll play with. So it typically will default to Kyle, who plays a pop rock sound, and he plays on the SoCal drum kit, which is just a nice, clean drum set sound. But then there's also Logan, who plays on the Retro Rock kit. He's a Retro Rock drummer. Or Britpop Ian, who plays on the Manchester kit. And each of these kits are going to sound different. So if I solo this here, this sounds very different than if I were to play the Blue Ridge kit. Or the B Bluebird kit, right? So you want to find the drummer that speaks to you, but also the drum sound that speaks to you. And this doesn't actually end here. So these are the most straightforward rock drummers. But if we actually go back here, we can just shift back. We have even more drummers. There's alternative drummers. So maybe you want Aiden, indie pop drummer, or Nikki, an indie disco drummer, right? You want to find the drummer that works for you and then the drum kit that works for you. So once you find a drummer, play around with the drum kits. Maybe you like the way Nikki plays, but you like the sound of this Motown revisited drum kit more. And you typically want to do that in the context of what you're working on. So if I have a bass and guitar idea that I can just flesh out really quickly to the tempo of the song, this is really important when you record anything. If you do it before a drummer, you want to make sure you turn your metronome on because the drums are going to play to that metronome. So you need to play to that metronome. But record something from your song to try to get the feel of the drums or start with the drums, find a sound that you like, and then start fleshing in around that. Okay, so we have our drummers and then we have our sounds. So right now we're on Nikki with the Motown Revisited drum kit. It's probably not the right feel for this song, so I'm gonna go back here to rock. I think this is a pretty straightforward pop rock song, so Kyle's probably a good fit for me. And the SoCal kit is just a good straightforward drum kit. Retro Rock is great, Portland is great, they're all great. So just find what works for you. Nothing is right, nothing is wrong. It's just about what you like. So we're gonna start with this for this particular song here. 
right? Already fits the vibe. And then I'm gonna hit E to bring up my editor window again. And we're gonna start going through this because this is how you really start to shape the parts in your song, the sections of your song. So here we have beat presets. We have this really cool X, Y controller that allows us to vary our loudness, how intense it's playing, how soft it's playing, and the complexity. So up towards the top is louder, towards the bottom is softer, to the right is more complex, to the left is more simple, and we can put this anywhere in there. So we'll get to that in just a second. And then we have our selector for different parts that the drums are actually playing. So we have a kick and a snare. So this is a kick drum, this is a snare drum. You can turn them off or on here. And we have hi-hats, cymbals, or toms. These are one or the other. So you could turn either of these off or on, but when it comes to hi-hats, you can turn them off. Or if you select the cymbals, it's gonna turn the hi-hats off, or the toms, it's gonna to turn the other off. You only get to select one of these three things. So you can play around with the right combination of the hi-hats, cymbals, or toms. And then we have these percussion elements up here. So we have a tambourine, a maraca, or a clap, and you only get one of these, but you can turn that off or on up here. These sliders here that we'll get to in just a minute, and then a fills knob, which are the transitions between sections, and swing, which is right for certain styles of songs. So we'll get to those in just a second. What I would recommend you do as you're starting to find the sound for your song is start with the beat preset. So if we just listen over here as this is playing, as I go through these beat presets, they're really gonna change what's being played. And you'll see the parts of the drum kit are changing as well. So, Crash the Party, Echo Park, right, that's cool. Golden State, that's cool. A little bit more intense, Half Pipe is what we started on. We have Mixtape, New Kicks, Ocean Boulevard, Paper Hearts, each one of these sounds different and they the drummer is playing something very different style-wise, right? So this last Paper Hearts, very busy hi-hat compared to half pipe, right? And each one of these is different between the different drummers. So this is gonna prompt me because I'm trying to change a drummer now after I've set this up. I appreciate that they do that. We'll hit change drummer here just for demonstration purposes, but you'll see different beat preset names and these parts are going to be different. So that super fast hi-hat one is going to be different here. If I go back to Kyle and select his bottom one, paper hearts, right? Very different parts. So again, you wanna find the drummer, play around with these, find what's working in the context of your song or song idea or what's inspiring to you to write the rest of your song around and get something that's working for you. So I'm just gonna start with this half pipe. It's a good straightforward beat for this very straightforward section in this song. And I think this song, it was intended to start really loud. So I'm actually gonna pull the loudness all the way up here. I like that it's feels more intense now. If I bring it down, it's gonna feel really soft. Could be the right vibe on this song. I don't think that's what I'm going for here. So we'll pull that up to being loud. If I pull it up to the right, it's gonna get more complex. Check this out. That's cool. I don't dislike that, that might be the move, right? Actually, you know what? Maybe we'll leave that. Let's pull it down for simple though, just for demonstration purposes here. So this is loud and simple. Pull it down to loud and soft, or simple and soft. Let me go the total opposite. We're gonna go up here for complex and loud. That's cool. I like that kick and snare rhythm. That's cool, okay. So now that I've done that, I've gotten this feel that I like for the section of this song. Something you can play around with here is maybe I want it to start on the cymbals instead of on the hi-hats. Or maybe I want to start on the toms. Maybe I don't want anything, I just want that snare and kick them. Right, so you can play around with that. I think the hi-hats were the right move on this. I like that feel. Now, I could make these hi-hats even busier if I go over here and pull this slider right here to the right. I'll solo this so it's easier to hear. Super fast, busy hi-hats now if I pull it all the way to the left. Slower in the middle is kind of in between. And then one more is just a little bit busier, but not as busy as this, right? So you have this gradations. You can really get this set exactly where you want it to be. I'm liking number two on this one for me personally on this song. 
that's cool. And then similarly, you can make the kick and the snare busier or less busy. Kick and snare are really the driving force in most songs. And so getting this right is important, but trust your instincts. If you like it, then go with it. If you don't, then keep playing with it until you do, right? So kick and snare starts on five. What happens if I pull it up here? Gets a little bit busier. If I go to halftime, it actually goes to playing half the speed of the rhythm. To do versus if I go back one, right? If I go up to 2x, it's gonna double time it. Which could be cool, I don't know, let's listen. Could be perfect for your song. It's not working for me on this one, halftime. Like a little breakdown. Could be cool at some point in the song, but not for the intro for me. I think five is pretty good. But we could also go lighter. Oh, see, cool. Go a little less with it. So essentially we're making this a, a simpler part, a less busy, less complicated part. I think five is pretty cool. Love it. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you some percussion. Let's play around with some percussion here. And let's start with this tambourine. So when I turn on the tambourine, defaults to one, which isn't too busy if I solo it here. You hear a tambourine in there occasionally. It's not super loud, super prominent. If I turn it up to two, a little bit busier. If you turn it up to three, you'll start to hear it. it's doing uh, 16th notes, maybe 30 second notes, I think 16th notes. And then actually if I hit B here or turn on this, click this little knob here, I can actually turn the percussion up. A little hack for you. So go back to our editor window. You can really hear that tambourine now. And then we can do the same thing with maracas. Really busy maracas. I'll turn them up even louder. Could be a little bit less busy. Or pretty straightforward. Same with claps. We can go really straightforward. A little bit busier. Or pretty busy, right? Okay, and then the last thing you need to know is your fills and swing knobs. These are really important. So a fill is just that little transition between sections. So right at the end of this drum part, you'll hear he does what's called a fill. Right, it's not very complicated here, but I can play around with this knob and it will change what the fill is. If you pull it all the way to the right, it's gonna play a lot of fills. So if we listen here, and the end here, I mean, that's a lot, but check it out. I mean, that's pretty cool. You might be the right thing in the section, in some section of your song. And if I pull it all the way to the left, it's that's actually gonna get rid of fills altogether. So now there's not gonna be any, which might be the right thing for that section of your song. More is not always better. It's very common to have whole sections of songs without any fills. So I might start the song with no fills, and then I might take this here and I might hit Command C to copy it and paste it over here. That's just duplicated exactly what we have. So I have the exact same drum part here. But in the second one, I might want to add some fills in. Maybe at the end. Let's play around with this until we actually get what we want, right? Right? Play around with it. So this first section of your song, maybe you don't have any fills, maybe you have the exact same part, but you have fills come in, or you have a tambourine that comes in for that second part, so that this transition here. Right? Play around with it. Okay, and now the last thing you'll see on here is this swing knob. This is really important, and you only need it for songs that should have a swing to them. So if I were to dial in swing on this, this is where it's gonna have kind of a pull to it. So like, for example, on this drums, if we listen now, that's very cool sounding, but this song is so straight, it's so linear. If I were to put that behind what's going on, that just doesn't quite fit, right? If I turn it all the way off and make it really, really straight, that fits better because of the rhythms in the song. So if your song has this kind of swing feel, and just feel that out. If you have this kind of feel to your song, you're gonna probably wanna turn the swing up, but otherwise you're gonna wanna keep it all the way down. Just 
keep it super straight, super linear. Okay, and one little bonus thing. This is something I missed for a long time and it caused me so many headaches. This is maybe gonna save you more headaches in the future than anything else in this video. And that is that when you are editing down here, it is only editing what you have selected, but it is also editing everything you have selected. So for example, if I'm on this track and I click up to this track, it will select everything on that track, which means that now if I bring this loudness all the way down, as opposed to just bringing it down for this one region like I might think I'm doing, it's actually doing it for all the regions. And that's indicated here where it says multiple regions selected. This is just important to know because if you've already tailored everything and you just wanna go up to this track really quickly and edit this one little region, and then you accidentally have all your regions selected, then you will now accidentally change everything in your session. That is such an easy mistake to make and can really mess you up and give you a huge headache, something you have to fix over time. It's really frustrating. And one more double bonus here that's really cool to know is this end tab here. So if I'm looking at the end of a region, at the bottom here, I can extend that region and that's just going to continue on what I've already selected and set for that region. If I am at the top here, you see that the, my cursor turns into a little half circle thing that's actually going to loop. So that's gonna perfectly repeat the start of this. I personally don't do a lot with loops. Instead, I often just either extend the region or I will copy with Command C and paste next to it. That way I can easily tweak both of these regions. But it's nice with looping if you just have one little short section that you've gotten perfectly dialed in and you know you want that exact thing to repeat, I can then just repeat it and that loop is going to take care of it. And then if I ever tweak this one little section, it will tweak that entire loop and it will always stay exactly the same for that whole section. Okay, I hope that was helpful. GarageBand Drummer is crazy. The amount that you can do with this, it, I think it's one of the biggest advancements in home music production. It's amazing. And the fact that it's free in GarageBand, unbelievable. So super powerful tool. I'll actually be back next week showing you a couple ways you can go above and beyond and get even more control over GarageBand Drummer. But in the meantime, I wanna give you something. GarageBand Drummer already sounds really good. Once you get the part figured out that you want, it sounds good, but it can sound way more realistic. And I put together a completely free guide that will show you how to make GarageBand drums sound more real. There's a link in the description below where you can download it again, completely free. So be sure to grab it. It's really going to help you out. Before we go, I want to hear from you. Do you have a favorite drummer in GarageBand? I personally really like Kyle, the just default pop rock drummer. I also like Logan, the retro rock. But even Ian, who, fun fact is my brother's name, is another favorite of mine. He's a Brit pop drummer. So I don't know that I could pick a favorite but I like all three of those. But let me know in the comments below if you have a favorite. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time.